just before we get to the demo, and I know that's the most important part, let's start at the bottom of the product structure. You'll see that you have interfaces available to you for some of the leading ITSM solutions. You might have your assets already in a CMDB. Uh, you might be pulling in material from uh, some of the power strips that are out there and the intelligence sensors and so forth. Or you might have a uh, collection of data already in some database, or maybe keep it in an Excel spreadsheet. So you can, through its open API, bring in all those data assets if you want to. It is a web-based system, highly scalable. And you'll see that the modules we just covered in the process cycle are covered at the top. The one that we didn't really address was the data center manager. Uh, there is a database that Roger will show you that's a materials catalog. It's all the uh, significant vendors out there that might be in your data center, all the servers out there, power strips and so forth, and what their specifications might be. Specifications for size, uh, you know, width, depth, uh, but also specifications on power pool, uh, heat conducted, and so forth. Um, so that, uh, that's the end light uh, product structure in a nutshell. Uh, now, I think the most important thing uh, is to probably go on to the demo and see it for yourself. So let me turn this over to Roger. Roger is our pre-sales manager, and he'll open up the demo of Enlight. Thank you, Alan. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, uh, I actually thought I might start out at one of the, the, the last steps that Alan covered to show you, you know, what kind of uh, real-time dashboards that you're basically getting here and looking at the key performance indicators that you're probably trying to monitor in your data center, and that would be, you know, space, power, and cooling. So you can see at this one dashboard that I'm looking out here, I'm using a gauge type of display to kind of give me my element there. Uh, right now I'm looking at all of my data centers, but of course if I've got multiples and I want to split this down to only look at one of my single data centers, I can load up the list of all of my locations and, you know, just nav navigate down through the trees to see where I might want to do it. In this case, we'll just leave this up here. And you'll notice that as we're looking at this view, we're, we're kind of looking at three of our data center locations here. And, you know, how many U's are being used? What's the kilowatt being used? What's the network distortion looks like? But then we can also drill down further into that to look at, well, what are the top power consumers, right? If you've got a green initiative going on, you probably want to look at things like this. And, you know, what immediately probably jumps to you is look at the amount of power being used by these older HP devices up here. That would tell me as a data center manager that we should probably start thinking about a, a migration plan to replace these very power inefficient servers with something that's a little bit more green by today's standards. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of a dice board. Slice and dice this thing look at it in any number of ways. You know, as I said, there are tons of these dashboards pre-configured right out of the box for you, to, for you to utilize. You set what you want the refresh rate to be. So while I don't know that it needs to be, you know, refreshing every five seconds, you can set that to whatever it would be meaningful to your organization. And it just gives you a lot of, you know, very detailed information. And again, being able to slice and dice and drill down and look at it from different views makes for, as Alan said, a very uh, rich reporting tool that's out there. And then as Alan also mentioned, there are any number of the typical types of reports that you would expect, you know, show me uh, space left by cabinet, show me uh, all equipment by, by location room, show me my trending over time of heating and cooling or whatever the, uh, the, the case may be that you may want to uh, take a peek at that. So any number of these out-of-the-box reports, and I'm, you know, in a limited time here, I'm not going to go into a bunch of those, but it would kind of give you the, uh, kind of give you the idea that, uh, you know, what kind of information is being done. Notice that there are runtime parameters where I can slice and dice this, but, you know, this is showing all my data center locations. What kind of air conditioning do they have? Auxiliaries, cabinets, chassis, you know, commandos. You know, what, do they have KVM switches? What kind of network cards does that have by data center? So they've done a very good job in trying to, to, to provide you very rich CAN reporting as well as you know, uh, real time, near real time reporting through the uh, uh, through the dashboards there. 
Now, what I'm going to go into is to now let's kind of go take a peek. If we go back to that process cycle, uh, I've obviously already discovered data and have it in InLight, and now I kind of want to model, visualize, and model this data. So I'm going to go to one of my locations here, and if I didn't know, you know how to get there, I could just uh, traverse through the location. But I'm going to go into my silver room, which just happens to be in my New York location in that particular building. And what it's going to do is bring me back a visual representation of what that particular data center for looks like and how it's currently populated from a uh, rack and server and air conditioning and PDU perspective and so forth. So you'll notice that it's you know got the room drawn out uh, as to what it looks like. I can clearly see my doors here. I can see my you know air conditioning units that I've got. You know here are where I've got uh, racks shown or, in the case of these smaller ones here, freestanding servers that may be there. You know, you could have some big storage array setting on the floor. Most things, as with most data centers, are in your standard racks here. And notice that there's a little grill set, uh, uh, cell reference here as I move my cursor around. It kind of lets me know where I am in there. And you also note that I can kind of mark out some zones of a particular set of servers, even within this data center, that I might want to be able to report on or capture metrics on separate, because this is for a particular project or important app that we've got set up. And even though we're sharing the data center, I at times want to be able to, you know, look at that area uh, uh, independent of the rest of the data center floor. And then what I can do, as Alan said, the the, the module is called to visualize area. I can now look at this data center and look at it from a different set of perspective. Maybe I want to look at it and basically see, well, what's my cabinet free space available? And so I'm just going to apply that view to this data center, and it you know brings back a representative based on this scale of how much uh, you know what's the consumption I have in these data centers. And you can see these are uh, obviously pretty full here. Or you know maybe another one is we're really concerned today is let's look at our uh, our heat load and kind of see what's going on. So now as I look at all of these servers and uh, the racks uh, in here, I can see that I'm I'm really not too bad. I tend to be down in the green and yellow range, which is below my threshold of how hot I want a cabinet to be. With the exception of this one here is kind of getting up into that seven or eight kilowatt range. So I would probably again, as the manager of the data center here, maybe want to take a look at that particular uh, cabinet. So I can just double click on it and say, I would like to uh, view that asset. And of course, the first thing I clicked on was the cabinet. So it knows who the manufacturer of the cabinet is. It knows how many uh, total heights, how many uses it's taking up, because all of that comes from the manufacturer's published spec that InLight maintains in its database of this particular type of cabinet you know, what, what are the attributes that, uh, that go with that cabinet. But the more important part is I can now actually take a look at that particular cabinet. I can see all of my 42 U's, and I can see that this guy is just packed full of different servers in there. Uh, if I've got some rear-mounted servers, by the way, I can spin this guy around and see what's going on. Sideway view, of course, would let you see if you had any short-mounted uh, servers. But the thing that really sticks out and why that was probably showing up as orange was that if I look at my heat gauge over here, you can see that I am above my threshold of what I want it to be. And there are a couple of different ways we look at power within InLight. Uh, we can look at what the manufacturer's specs are uh, that they say is the heat draw load that's being done by that. Uh, we typically will then use a, uh, a, a lower scale of that because most of the manufacturers say, hey, at an initial startup, that biggest current draw is what they publish. So that generally we will rate that down anywhere from 20 to 30 percent to get what your true runtime consumption is going to probably be. And then if you are an advanced data center where you have some of those smart power strips, we'll actually get a real-time feed and we'll know exactly how much power you're consuming. And this is obviously the direction folks are going in, but very few folks in their data centers have everything with the real-time feed today. So InLight can handle uh, whatever, uh, whatever measurement that you need to bring in there. 
So probably what I would want to do at this point is see if I can find one of these servers that we perhaps could put in some other location. So I'm just going to say I want to edit the current situation. What would happen if we pull this guy out? And you can see that that would certainly lower my, uh, my, uh, my power consumption down under what my threshold of 7 was. So maybe that's, a, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I ought to see if I could uh, find another home for that. Or I could try, you know, a different cabinet here uh, and let you, let you go through there. So lots of different ways you could do that. So let's actually take a look at this particular server and, uh, and see if we can find somewhere that we, might want to, uh, that we might want to put that. So if I look at that particular asset, it's a, it's a standard server. Let's view that asset and understand what all we're tracking in, uh, in InLight. So this is a uh, RX 6600 uh, from uh, HP. Again, we bring in the picture and all of the manufacturer's specifications about it. I know that it's a standard 19-inch rack. I know that this particular server is taking up seven U's of that, uh, of that rack that we've got out there. I can see that this uh, particular server requires two different plugs. So that's how I'm figuring out you know, how much of my power strips are being used and ultimately what my current draw is going to uh, be. I can see some general statistics of, you know, some people will have cabinets that play particular roles for reporting, uh, so you may want to do that. This one runs my ERP application. This one's dedicated to my human resources, that type of thing. Obviously went, uh, went into this environment on 2008. I can kind of see, you know, what my copper and my fiber ports look like that, how many I've got in there. I know because I also define my organizations and my groups, which I may or may not have pulled in from Active Directory, but you know, who do I call for support on this particular server that I'm looking at? Uh, who is the beneficial owner in case you get into a chargeback mode? Uh, are we running any VMs on this particular environment? And if so, what are those uh, logical VMs that are, that are running on this particular, uh, this particular server? Uh, if I had this one hard related to some other asset or any dedicated peripherals, like it had a storage array plugged in directly or something, you know, you could certainly uh, you could certainly show that. Uh, what do my uh, what do my card connections look like? So, kind of where are we going uh, from our copper ports and so forth? What are the tables? And you'll actually notice if you go down at the bottom, I can actually look at that run, and I can actually even visually display that for you. Uh, exactly how we're coming out of the uh, the particular server, and you know what network devices and all that we're going through to actually get to our network connections over either those copper or those uh, those fiber cables. So really great uh, great view there. Uh, if you're using the Inlight Discovery tool, you know as most most boxes will do, it brings in how much RAM you've got, what kind of CPUs and all. This is where that would display had you in a real world environment where you had brought in uh, all of that other uh, all of that other discovered data and so forth. Uh, notice also that uh, you know we map the entire power chain. So I know I've got this server. I know it had two plugs. I can see here are my two power strips where this particular server is uh, is plugged into, and if I view that power strip, I see you know what kind of power strip is it. Again, I've got the manufacturer's data sheet on that one. Uh, I can see that that then power strip is plugged into you know a commando, and if I take a look at that commando, I can again come back and get the attributes of that particular. Uh, device where we're plugging in uh, that power strip again with uh, the specs again. And I can see that then that, of course, is plugged into, obviously, our power distribution unit. And there again, I can bring up the view of that particular uh, PDU that I've got. I can kind of see all of the information about, uh, about that particular box. And you know, I can see how many breakers are in the panel. Uh, here's my panel. I can see you know, everything there. Uh, there is about that, and I can even then say for that particular PDU, uh, you know, does it map over to a, a given, uh, does it map out to the utility? So if I go to my PDU and go out, I can actually then actually point as to what power feed, if, if you by chance have multiples, uh, are you actually uh, coming off there. 